Hey, it's Matt Haynes, and I might have made a mistake. You see, I bought a drone, but it's not a DJI drone. It's not a Skydio drone. It's an off-brand company called Tencent, I think it's called. This is the TSRC A6, and it was under $200. And I'm not sure what I was thinking when I bought it. Um, and now I'm a little concerned. So what I'm, I'm hopeful but I'm concerned. So what I'm hopeful for is that the flying experience will be decent. I don't expect the camera to be any good, not for an under $200 drone, but I'm hoping it'll be fun to fly and uh, we can check it out. So let's open this box up and take a look at it. Comes sealed in a little close zip up plastic bag. As a case, that's good. They packed it very securely. They got uh, foam on the controllers here. It's a pretty small remote. Comes with a battery. Actually, I think it comes with two batteries. All right, there's the drone right there. There's a camera up front. It's uh, not on a gimbal. I believe the camera can raise and lower. Drone comes with another battery inside the drone already. There's a bunch of stuff inside the, uh, the storage pouch up here. Let's see what's going on. Looks like a couple of USB cables for charging, uh, extra propellers, screwdriver, or, yep, screwdriver, and a manual. Gonna have to read this. So the controller, this opens up on the bottom. Maybe they're antennas or something, I don't know. Okay, there's a little door that opens up like this. Okay, we gotta go uh, take this for a flight. I'm gonna have to charge up the batteries and uh, read the instructions, make sure I don't mess things up. I'm gonna take the TSRC A6 out for a flight, and this isn't my first time flying it. I did put it up in the air briefly uh, about a week ago, and uh, had some strange behavior, so I'm gonna see if it does the same thing again. And uh, it's a little breezy today. I was hoping to get out here before the breeze picked up, but well, we get to see how it performs in the breeze. I brought the instructions with me because uh, it is not as straightforward as flying with um, a DJI product, that's for sure. You gotta sync the GPS every time. You gotta synchronize or reset the gyroscopes. One thing I discovered too is that when, when you open the app on the phone, you gotta leave it open. If you close it, it loses its place and uh, it failed. And so I ended up not recording anything internally. Skip over the safety instructions. We don't need no safety. All right, I gotta place this on a flat surface, nose straight ahead. Nice and hold. So I've gotta rotate this like this. And then I've gotta, I gotta do this. Seems like hocus pocus. All right, it is solid green. There's a little indicator. Power button changes colors to tell you some things. That means it's also found GPS. All right, now I'm gonna hook up the app because I know I have to format the card here. Huh, so it just automatically uh, hooked up to the Wi-Fi because uh, I had hooked it up before, so that's good. So this app is pretty bare bones. In fact, a couple of these things in the lower right aren't even developed yet. But uh, let's get the motor started up anyway. So the, I started the propellers up and then they uh, shut off after a while. I don't know if that's because I hadn't put it up in the air. So we'll try that again. It does have automatic takeoff. You have to swipe. Whoa. Why is it beeping? It's beeping. I have no idea why it's beeping. UAV is low voltage. How is that possible? 24%, okay. So this wasn't much of a uh, first flight. I'm gonna see if I can land it on the sidewalk here. All right, I'm gonna change the battery and see if I have any more power left in the other battery. Got 100% battery, that's good. First time I tried this, I didn't have the app hooked up, but it gives, it gives you a little visual representation of the steps you have to take. And uh, so I guess it's not as bad as I thought. All right, let's try it again, shall we? I just gotta step out of the way here. All right, taking off. GPS mode. Oh. All right, so the wind is really taking it. 
I'm going to take it up though. And uh, almost took out a barbecue. Or actually, the barbecue almost took out the drone. Okay, flying right over me here. And last time I flew this, it just stopped and then I couldn't get, yeah, it's stopping too. I think there must be some sort of um, loser user newbie mode because it won't let me fly very far away from my location. I got to look into that. That image sure is shaky. <laughs> just watching it in the air. It uh, does not resist wind very well. Let's see how high I can take it up here. 100 feet, already down to 45% on the battery. As Poor as it is in terms of uh, stability and camera and all that, flying it, like to fly it in a, in a circle as I watch it smoothly, it actually looks pretty good. I'm not gonna say that it flies better than a DJI, but it is very smooth, uh, so I'm surprised. Now, when you just let it hover, the wind just smacks it around, so it's not coming down. It's just staying up there. It's in really slow coming down mode, maybe. So I don't know if it lost signal there, but it was did not appear to be responding. All right, now I'm gonna try and catch the landing on camera, but it's so windy, I don't know if that's gonna work or not. Let's try. Okay, so I'm packing up now. There are some features that sound pretty sophisticated, like you can set a flight path and things like that. I'm not gonna try that this time, but uh, I'm gonna have to take it out again and check those things out, I think. And uh, also I gotta figure out if there's some sort of beginner mode because uh, I can't go very far with it so far. All right, time to go. All right, I wanted to take this TSRC drone out and test some of the other features that I didn't get a chance to test last time. All right, I just got to go through the drone calibration process again. Well, this is a bit of a puzzle. It says it's ready to fly. It didn't make me do any of the calibration. Let's just see. Hopefully it doesn't fly off. It says it's got GPS going on there. All right. Hey, we got the drone. In. It's getting a little close to me there. We got the drone in the air. Let's take it up a little bit. The first thing we can do is what's called GPS follow, which it should follow the receiver. Let's see if it follows me. Seems to have lost me already. Right? Is it coming? Yeah, it's coming. Doesn't have me in sight. Let's, uh, Get me in sight there. There I am. Now, just a reminder, this has no collision avoidance, so there's a tree there that it could hit if I'm not careful. It was about to hit a tree. Okay, so that seems to work. So what I'm doing now is I, I did turn off beginner mode and I realized I didn't turn it off earlier because I wasn't actually hooked up to the drone. Okay, flight distance, I can go further. I just increased the flight distance so that it can the drone can go further away. As you can see, those trees there. You know, it, when I went to settings, it, it seems to have stopped recording. I don't know if it actually stopped recording. Okay, so I'm bringing the drone back. It goes a lot faster now that it's out of beginner mode. And we may or may not be recording internally, stuff to tell. Okay, so we're gonna try out one of these other functions here. Now, the instructions on this thing are not great. Um, there wasn't really a lot of instruction about route planning, so I think I can drop a pin. Okay, I just dropped a bunch of pins I didn't wanna do. Whoops, now I moved up. Now, it looks like it stopped recording again. No idea, picture receiving. Okay, so I backed out of the menu for just a sec and then went back in. I went to the home page and backed out accidentally and it stopped recording. So it might be recording video, it might not. This is not a great controller setup. Okay, so I'm gonna try this route planning and I'm gonna try and put in a couple of points here and let's see what it does. Okay, I'm gonna click go. Oh, please confirm your waypoint. Let's see what it does. All right, it's going a little close to that tree. How far it's going to go? I'm going to bring it up a little bit too. It's so scary. It's just completely automated. Okay, so there did not appear to be a stop button. So I uh, hit the the exit button, and that took me out of, to the home page again. That was uh, not great. All right, what else can we do here? What are some other functions we can do? Um, okay, there's a photo thing where you hang hold up a peace sign, and it takes a photo. Has to be within three meters. Oh, that's close. So if I go like this, 
Oh. Okay, so looks like you push the button, you make a peace symbol, and then it does a countdown. So I'm going to do it again. And let's, let's change the angle here a little bit. All right, I'm going to do the piece. It's doing a countdown. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back to Earth here. We got to try out some of the features. Okay, so we have tested this drone pretty thoroughly, and the question is, was it a mistake for me to buy? Well, let's discuss this in terms of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, first, the good. I think the drone flew pretty well, especially considering the price point of like $170, give or take. It turned smoothly, it ascended and descended like I expected it to, it didn't seem to like take off on its own, and it didn't disappear either, which was one concern I had. I was, I was quite concerned actually that it was gonna lose signal, lose GPS, and just head towards the horizon, and it didn't do that. Now, I don't know if it lost signal i don't i don't think it lost signal there were a couple of times where the drone wouldn't descend right away and i don't know if that was user error or i had lost signal momentarily i don't know the app didn't say it had lost signal but we'll talk about the app in a little bit but overall i think the drone was a nice flying experience so if you're just looking for a drone that you just want to fly around and have fun with this might be a good option. All right, let's talk about the bad. And the bad is the app. The app is, well, it's unfinished for one thing. There are parts of it that are just, just blank, like the manual, for example. And also it's really unstable. If you leave the main page for any reason, like accidentally, like I did a few times, the, the app forgets whether you are in the middle of recording a video, for example. And that instability could lead to your drone just going missing or crashing or something like that. So you've gotta be really careful with this app not to leave that main page and that's that's a little concerning and finally we get to the ugly and the ugly is the camera now the images I thought looked a little bit better than some that I'd seen on YouTube before but ultimately the quality is not there because the image isn't stabilized without a gimbal without image stabilization, everything's gonna be shaky. And this makes the videos unusable. And it actually makes some of the still photos unusable too, because if the wind's picking up and the drone's moving around, you're gonna get blur in those photos. So if you're just looking for images or videos that you would send to your friends, it's fine, but I don't even think I would put something from this drone up on Instagram, because the quality is just not there. The TSRC A6, kind of hit or miss. So how do you know what to look for in a drone? I mean, what are what are features that are essential and what are features that are nice to have? Well, good news, I've made a video that talks about the four essential features that every drone needs for a good flying experience. And you can check it out right there. I